Hello everyone, my name is Kelly Chisholm. I am the website designer for my career quest. I'm also Curtis's niece. And in a previous video, he had asked me to share a little bit about my career journey as an artist, designer, and web developer, and a few tips that I would give to someone else who was just starting off as in a career in the arts. And in this video, I want to talk specifically about my own educational journey and some tips for people so that they can set themselves up for success in the arts through the way that they fund their education. So before I share my own educational journey and those tips, I wanted to offer the disclaimer that I know my own story has a lot of privilege in it. There were a lot of things that enabled me to receive a really wonderful, solid education, which I did nothing to earn or merit or cause. And I also want to, while acknowledging the privilege in my own story, give you guys some hope. Even if your story doesn't have the same opportunities as mine, there are still really wonderful possibilities and opportunities out there to, for you to fund your education without debt and set yourself up for a successful career in the arts. With that in mind, um, here's my educational story. I went to a private, out-of-state, four-year liberal arts college. As you can imagine, it was pretty expensive, but it was a wonderful education, and I'm um, incredibly glad that I went there. The reason that I was able to go to that college was because my parents had saved quite a bit to fund mine and my brother's educations, and I can never repay them for that. I am immensely grateful for the sacrifices that they made to enable me to have a good education and for their um, willingness and their commitment um, to fund my education. I know that that's not something that's available to every student or every family, um, but that was part of my story. So my parents helped to fund my education. When I was a junior in high school, they sat me down and told me that this was the amount of money they had saved for my education, and they encouraged me that if I wanted to go to a college that was more expensive than that, that I find scholarships or choose a less expensive option instead of going into debt. And again, I'm immensely grateful to them for offering me that possibility. So the college that I wanted to go to, like I said, was fairly expensive, so it was more than the amount that they had saved. I was able to compete in a an academic scholarship weekend um, when I was a senior for that college and received um, academic scholarships for the remaining amount um, that I needed to go there. And then when I was a junior and a senior, I received um, scholarships for the art and design program as well. So looking at my story, my number one tip for financing your education, it, even if um, your family was not able to save money for your education, is to look at scholarships before you look at student loans. Um, if you're like me, those scholarships will be academic. Um, look at what you're good at. Is that athletics? Is that music? Is it some other ability that you have? I do not have those abilities. I am terribly unathletic. And so I knew that I was going to need to find a school that really valued academic performance and gave generous scholarships in that area. So that's one way to help narrow down which colleges are a good fit for you. Um, if you find a college that gives generous scholarships for something that you're good at, that's good for your finances and it's also a good indication that you are going to be a good fit for that college and them for you. So think about what are you good at? What is something that you excel in that, and find the college that values that? There are other scholarships that are available for um, things that are not merit-based, things that are not based on your abilities, um, that are just based on inherent things about you. Um, for example, I was talking to a college admission, admissions counselor who told me that he knew a student who received a $5,000 scholarship for being a redhead. So, are you redheaded? Is there something else unique about you, your culture, your ethnicity, um, something unique about you for which you can receive a scholarship? There are so many groups out there that want to help students fund their education, and they are looking to provide those opportunities for specific groups of people. So find that group. If you're struggling in this area, struggling to find the scholarships, I highly, highly recommend working with my Uncle Curtis in his online community, his membership called uh, the Career Launch Club. He has a whole section entitled Fund Your Education, and that's a fantastic resource. It has links to websites with hundreds of scholarships. So if you're struggling in that area, I'd recommend talking to him. So my first tip is to focus on scholarships, really put your energy and um, your work into those scholarships instead of student loans. Um, the second tip that I have is to look at other educational opportunities. If 
an education like I received is outside of your financial abilities or it's just not something you're interested in. I know that a liberal arts education where you study a wide variety of subjects isn't for everyone. It's not something that everyone is going to be interested in. And if that's the case, there's good news for you if you're looking at a career in the arts because the kind of education I received was a luxury. It's not a necessity. Having worked with and for other design firms, I can tell you for sure that they're not necessarily looking for a, a, a designer or an artist who has a prestigious um, Ivy League education. What they're looking for is someone who has some sort of formal education. And more importantly, they're looking for someone who has a strong portfolio. So that's good news for you. It means that you don't have to go to a private four-year out-of-state liberal arts university like I did. There are numerous wonderful educational opportunities that are less expensive, that are closer to home, um, that don't take as much time. So for example, near me, I just within a few hours drive, there is a very well-regarded, highly reputable graphic design program. It's a two-year program, it's accelerated, and you don't take any other core classes, you just take design classes, so it takes you less time, it's less expensive, and that education is going to look just as good as my education to potential employers as long as your portfolio is sound. So I would highly recommend that you look at those other educational opportunities. I know that there are programs like that in graphic design, like I mentioned, also in web development, in the more fine arts, so if you're going into painting or sculpture, I know that there are programs specifically designed for those. So take a look at those other educational opportunities. If you can't find the scholarships to fund your education, or if that sort of four-year liberal arts education is not the right option for you. The third recommendation that I would give is to work with clients while you're still in school. This is going to help to build your portfolio, like I said before. Um, that's the number one thing that future employers are going to be looking at. So this is going to help to build your portfolio. It's also going to provide some extra money to help finance whichever educational option you've chosen. I know that a lot of students, I teach design at the college level, and a lot of my students are a little bit hesitant to start working with clients because they feel like they, they aren't as good as they're going to be in the future. And that's quite honestly true for all of us. I'm not as good as I'm going to be in the future, but the way to get better, to build your portfolio, to find new clients, is to work with clients now. And once you've had a few design classes, a few web development classes, a few art classes, whichever area you're going into, you're going to be better than that client is at whatever you're creating for them. You will be a better portrait painter. You will be a better graphic designer or better web developer than they are. You'll be able to provide a product that is better than what they could do on their own and it'll be a little bit cheaper for them as well because they're paying a student instead of a design studio or an established artist. So it's a win-win for everyone. So those are my three recommendations. Really go aggressively actively after scholarships. Um, explore other educational opportunities and the third is to work with clients to build your portfolio while you're still in school. This will make you more attractive to future employers and it will provide a lot of additional income to fund your education. If you have any questions about how to fund an education in the arts or just about how to choose your education, choose your college, choose your career, please contact us at mycareerquest.com. My Uncle Curtis is a fantastic resource for all things career coaching and career counseling and I would be thrilled to talk to you more about a career in the arts.